since it's been a while since I've made a cabinet, I took the time to mark these two pieces. These are the inside faces of the cabinet. Up here is the top, and there's going to be a mortise up here to take the top of the cabinet. These two pieces here, this is going to be the back of the cabinet, and this is a mortise to take the back. There's a fixed shelf in here, and this is the reference line I'm trying to hit and this is the other side and that will be dependent on the thickness of the plywood and then all the way down here is the toe kick where it's marked similarly. Figured it was a good idea to get a coat of polyurethane on these pieces before I started the assembly. <clears throat> this piece of plywood is the bottom so you put it in place and then the technique is you push this clamp up against the plywood and then cinch it down and confirm everything looks good. That is a really good snug fit. It's a little busy here, so let me briefly describe what's going on. The first thing I did is the two halves of the cabinet here are put down on the work surface, and I have them clamped together on each end with a pipe clamp and the spring clamp. Next thing I did was just visually try to figure out where I wanted the whole patterns to go. So this is the top of the cabinet here, and I put these four little pieces of tape to kind of indicate. Didn't want to go too high or too low to the end of the cabinet. You don't want to be too far to the front or the back. And this one is covered by the pegboard I'm going to use to drill the holes, but I did a similar thing, kind of marking the lower extremes, and I'm going to have a row of holes go up this way. I put a three-quarter inch piece of plywood in the rabbits where the shelves are going to go, and this is the top shelf here and I'm delighted to report I could also get one in the lower shelf here these dados are lined up well I use pegboard to guide me in the holes and I trust that each of these holes are one inch in each direction and they're square and perpendicular to each other it also looks as though if you follow this edge that the piece of pegboard is also at least square and perpendicular to some of the holes and I spent some time to line up the pegboard I centered it on these two rows of holes and then I counted to the left and to the right so many places and I bothered to mark where I'm going to be drilling the holes so that once I get going I don't accidentally confuse myself. Finally, once I had an idea where the pegboard was going to land, I got a little lucky in the edge of the plywood. You can just see it run along the bottom of these holes the whole way across, which is telling me that this is parallel and perpendicular to the cabinet sides. To this side, you can see that this row also, the edge of the plywood is barely visible through the bottom of the holes. I have three clamps in three of the corners to hold this steady, and I'm ready to start drilling. Years ago, I purchased this self-centering bit, and it is 13 64ths. And if we come down here, punch in 13, divided by 64, then you multiply by 25.4 to get it in millimeters. So 13 64ths is a skosh above 5 millimeters. And here's an assortment of various pins that you can get at the box stores. And a common size is a 5 millimeter pin. And if you measure these, they actually measure a little bit less than 5 millimeters. To move the board to finish the run is easy enough. I slid the pegboard down and I have a peg in the bottom hole of each of the four runs. And all I have to do now is finish the drilling hole. So to do this upper part I have a smaller piece of pegboard that I've lined up and I did take a board to use as a parallel device against the data where the shelves go. And here are all the holes drilled.
So here it is all glued and clamped. I was trying to check these corners with a square and I was getting very confusing answers. Finally I realized that this top piece of plywood here had a real dip in it right around the middle of the span and this end was curling up. Put all the weights way out here. I can sight down it. It's looking fairly straight. I'll straighten it a little more when I go to put the face frame on. The platform's more or less level. These three horizontal pieces, vertical right now, are more or less plumb. So I think we're good to go. And here it is with the glue dry and the clamps off. Came out good. It is really solid and rigid. And this board actually came out pretty straight. I think what happened is when I glued it, these fibers expanded and it caused this to curl up. And I think my putting the weight on the end kind of bent it down. And then as it dried, maybe it uh, was a little straighter than it might be otherwise. But it's looking good. Here's the inside of the back with a second coat of polyurethane on it. These areas are where the shelves are going to meet the back. I'm going to try to add a little glue there, so don't want to get polyurethane on it. I have some of this polyurethane waterborne, and it's much thicker than the previous polyurethane that I used. Hoping it'll take fewer coats, get a nice finish on this. I'm just trying to seal the wood. Here's the back finished. This is the side that will be facing the inside of the cabinet. On the outside face, I doubled up the thin plywood to give me a little bit more to nail into. This again has two coats of the water-based polyurethane. Once I cut the boards, I clean up the edges with a hand plane. By far the easiest way to build a face frame is with pocket screws. The face frame is going to be painted, so the joints don't have to be perfect, but they do have to be pretty good. And the pocket holes do a pretty good job, but they all needed a little bit of cleaning up. Years ago, I would have done all this with sandpaper, and uh, it would have taken quite a while. But now I can get the job done quicker and easier with uh, planes and scrapers, so it's kind of cool. I took the time to check the wall that the cabinet was going to be mounted to to check for how plumb it was and I discovered it was a fair amount out of plumb. So I have glued a thin strip of wood along the edge. And as I go down here, you can see that it gets wider to nearly a half inch here, maybe seven or eight, nine millimeters. And this will be covered by the baseboard. And this will help get the face frame in the cabinet more plumb a little easier. And there are pencil lines on here because I took the time to scribe it. And I'll be cleaning up this joint and planing this edge down to get a better fit. Because I'm trying to play in a concave section, uh, this block plane is too long. It can't dig into the hollow, so I actually have to use this little baby hand plane. Then I'll move on to a spoke shave. I cut these scraps of wood to be basically the exact dimension of where the horizontal pieces meet the vertical, and I'm going to help use them to guide the spacing the sides of the cabinet as I glue the face frame on. So 
So the nail holes have been filled. In this area of the cabinet, I wanted to slide the carcass away from the camera or push the face frame toward the camera. And I have a little quarter inch setup guide that I use for reference on the far side. And the technique is I have a stretcher strip in the middle that's holding the two sides of the cabinet at a fixed distance. And then this clamp is pressing down on the cabinet over here and pressing on the face frame here. So as I tighten this clamp, pushing the face frame to the left, and the cabinet to the right, which is the direction I was looking for. I had to break out my large table saw sled, cut the stock for the movable shelves. I cut these thin strips of wood that are going to edge the plywood here, and the plywood's a little less than three quarter of an inch, and the board is a little more than three quarter, so that does okay. I had this piece of poplar that's a pretty close color match to the plywood, which is also made of poplar. And the technique I use is I uh, plane this edge to get it nice and smooth. Then I rip a thin strip with a jig set up on the table saw to set it at about uh, six millimeters, a little bit proud, a quarter inch. Then I bring the thin strip back to the bench, give it a few passes with the plane. I have a joiner, but it's a lot more satisfying to use a number seven. My first attempt at routing this profile didn't come out quite as clean as I had hoped. It had a couple notches and burn marks and chips in it. So I wanted to take a little bit off the top just to route it a little bit deeper just to clean up the cut. And instead of using my table saw, I used the trusty number 7 and I peeled off about 10 shavings which lowered this 10 or 15 thousandths and allowed the router to do another pass which really cleaned it up beautifully. For this routing operation, although I'm not using the fence, I have a dust port in the back of the fence that's hooked up to my dust collector. And I have my shop vac with my separator held in place with my little third arm here. I've done videos on all these things. For this particular procedure, it really kept the dust down to a minimum. This is a paper template I made for the cutout of the leg of the cabinet. In the large cabinet, it goes all the way to this corner before you start to see the contours. Where this cabinet's a little bit smaller, I'm going to cheat that a little bit and put this back to about right here. And I have a couple cans that seem to come pretty close to matching the radiuses of the contour. And I'm going to use those to get a little uniformity. And there's the line. Well, here are the two skirt pieces that are going to go in the cabinet, and they're going to sit more or less like this. This top profile is similar to the original. It's a little bit smaller, but the same profile, so it's sort of the baby brother, if you will, of the actual profile. But I don't think anybody's really going to notice. It looks fine. This is the front piece, and uh, when I built the face frame, I meant to fill this area in. And when I got to building it, I uh, didn't. I don't remember if I forgot or I had a better idea at the time. But in any case, I had to glue a piece on the back to uh, form a little bit of a hollow. And again, in the original cabinet, these were just legs. But for this particular cabinet, we didn't want to be able to see under it. So this is kind of giving you the shadow line of the legs without actually exposing the bottom. And this is the side piece cut to the same profile. Um, it's going to sit here and the face frame sits there. So I put this little spacer in so that would fit well and then I realized I had to put a similar spacer around the legs uh, just so that things wouldn't get in there and there they are they're looking pretty good just go to uh, prime and paint them up and install them I carefully cut away the baseboard on either side of the cabinet I thought that was the best solution for this installation there's the front piece There's 
here's the side piece and here is the cabinet installed came out very nice and the doors will be a separate project in video